In a patient presenting MCAS with POTS, brain fog, osteopenia, hypermobile EDS with CCI, cranial cervical instability, but not presenting with many skin or gastro issues, is there a particular treatment that you find most effective? Treated with H1, H2 blockers and chromalin, but not finding substantial relief and still episodic daily. So what I would say is that unfortunately, and I, and you know, Lenny, I think mentioned it earlier too, right? There's not always the a perfect way to figure out what drug or intervention is going to calm the mast cells in a particular part of the body. Some of it has to do with mutations. Some of it has to do with the mediators that th those mutations are causing. So it's complicated. And I wish I could say, well, in MCAS patients with POTS, I always use, you know, this intervention and that's, you know, what works. But I have these patients with POTS and all these, and brain fog and all these other symptoms who do really well with chromalin, but then others who don't. So what I would say, my advice would be to do this very systematically, trialing one thing at a time after chromalin. So maybe ketodafin, low-dose naltrexone, right? Those would be my top ones. Make sure you maybe even go through the various H1s. You know, one of the things that I find often is that, you know, patients, let's say they trial Claritin and, you know, they get some benefit. So they kind of stay on the Claritin and then they increase the Claritin, but they never tried Zyrtec Allegra or Zizel or any other ones. It could be that one of the other ones would be even better than the Claritin or Loratadine. If you haven't trialed all the H1 blockers, I would go back to basics. Trial all the ones that are available over the counter. There are some that are prescription, some that can be compounded. Try all the available H2 blockers and see if those make a difference. Sometimes compounding them, you know, could make a difference. So no one size fits all, unfortunately, but lots to trial. Let me say that all these simple ones, all the basic ones, they don't fit all. And so that's why I've done case series and tried different drugs that Dr. Afrin's tried as well and reported. And certainly if you've got hives or refractory hives, let's say you're on antihistamines, you're still breaking out with hives or asthma or food allergies or still having trouble with uh, anaphylaxis, then your candidate to go to your local allergist and say, I've got refractory hives. Don't say, I've got hives and MCAS. Don't say that. Just say, I've got hives and antihistamines are not working. Get your Zolaire, which is a very good drug. It has some side effects, potential, but get the Zolaire. It can help multiple different symptoms out of from MCAS, including GI and psychiatric too. But then let's say there is no skin manifestations or asthma or whatever the indications are for uh, Zolaire, which are four. Then think about, you know, seeing perhaps if you don't have one hematologist in your area, would you put me on hydroxyurea? I've got a series of 26 patients, just Google Weinstock and hydroxyurea. And then in a couple of weeks, there'll be a uh, my imatinib case and a case series of 23 patients treated with imatinib or Gleevec is the uh, trade name. And then Dr. Afrin's done uh, tofacinumab and the Zelgens is used for severe ulcerative colitis and rheumatoid arthritis. And uh, it's so far uh, in my limited experience been very, very good. Um, so there's advanced therapy. And then, uh, Tanya, do you want to talk about POTS treatment or the role of vagal stimulation? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And in general, I mean, there are lots of these various modalities that can be used for mast cell specifically, and then as a whole with POTS and other, other conditions. So what we know about the vagal nerve is that it's part of that autonomic nervous system, what's supposed to help you sort of kick in and help to balance your sympathetic nervous system. Sympathetic nervous system is like fight or flight, and often POTS can be exacerbated by it. I see a tremendous amount of vagal dysfunction leading down this path of lots of different symptoms, including POTS. And so there are a number of vagal stimulators on the market. 
Some of them are with prescriptions, some of them you can get on your own, but that can absolutely be a, a great tool for POTS. And then somebody also asked a question about uh, limbic retraining for MCAS and like Gupta or DNRS, and also a really great tool to help uh, again, bring the body back in balance. Because one of the things that we know is that the limbic system, which is sort of like your emotion center, can very much be a driver of, of some of this mast cell dysfunction. And so all these techniques are really helpful. And for some patients, they're the thing that's going to fix it. And for some, it's it's just, you know, one piece of the of the puzzle. 